Hello Internet, my name's Mark and today I'm going to look at the Moxon antenna. Now, I've got a, this is just a piece of foam at the, at the moment, I, I will be building this antenna and it just gives you an idea of the size, where that red line is is where the um, elements for the antenna goes and this antenna I'm going to build it for uh, 435 megahertz so it's suitable for use with my LRS system and the plan is to mount it to my radio somehow like that probably just a bit of velcro or something and then the coax will attach there but um i'll go over that um so i will show you how to build this it's very easy to build all you need is a few bits of wire and your coaxial pigtail and um a little program that does the measurements but first up i'm just going to show you the little program that does the calculations for you you'll find it on this uh on this website here, moxonantennaproject.com and if you go to, it's quite interesting, like if you want to get into the history of the Moxon antenna and stuff, have a look here. It is originally built for uh, amateur radio enthusiasts and they have also written this um, software for making the Moxon antennas and they go anywhere from the amateurs they use what's called the 77 centimeter band which is UHF basically and that creates similar sized antennas to the ones we want to use but um, what you want to do you want to download this moxongen.exe there's also a version for OSX which I've used but I'm going to be using it in a virtual machine okay so we'll move over and have a look at this program I've already got it running here in a virtual machine so it may be a bit slow the refresh and stuff now what you want to do you want to enter your frequency in, in, in here, and in my case, I'm using 435 megahertz. Um, and you want to put in your wire size as well. Uh, if you know what it is in AWG, you can just put it in there, but I've actually measured mine, and it is um, 0.9 millimeters. And then you select units down here and click calculate. Well, it's already calculated for me. And that will give you all the measurements that you need. You've got A, which is your width. You've got E, which is the basically the depth of the antenna. Um, up here, you've got the feed point. That's where your coax will attach to your antenna. So the shield of the coax will go to one side and the center of the coax will go to the other side. You want to make that gap as small as possible. And then you've got these other measurements, B, C, and D. And C here is 10.6 millimeters. This gap is apparently very important for the performance of the antenna. Like even a slight variation here can change the um, performance of it a great deal. Um, and also on the Windows version, this is not on the OS X version, you've got this option to generate a model. And I've been playing around with some uh, antenna simulation software uh, called 4NEC or 2NEC4 and you can generate a model there and then save that let's, let's do that you save it as an NEC file and, and I've done that before here so I've already done that and then you can open it let's cancel that I'll just show you where to get that program you want to go to www.qsl.net for NEC2. Now this is optional just if you're interested in it and this piece of software if you get into it it's very addictive. I have already spent many many hours going over all sorts of antennas and just tweaking them and seeing what the results are and stuff like that and I've put this Moxon antenna through this program and done a whole lot of optimizations and tried to make you know change the measurements a bit and the wire thing thickness to make the performance better and what gets put out by this uh, generator program is pretty good it's pretty spot on um, according to the simulation that is real world yeah the simulation is supposed to be pretty good now anyway this is the simulation software for NEC antenna visualizer and I've already loaded up you basically just go file open here and you can um, load up the antenna that we want to load but that's that's already loaded and basically 
very simple functions if you don't want to mess around with making your own antennas that's a whole making your own antenna designs that's a whole other subject you can actually see the antenna here it's plotted here in 3ds now what you want to do you go to NEC output data and we want to see the far field pattern make sure you've got 435 megahertz uh, selected and go generate and it does a whole lot of maths pretty quickly with um, modern computers and there we've got our radiation pattern there and this is you can see the direction there that's out to the front and I think if we go the keys are J, I and D and they will give you some of the features there and then we can see out the front we've got 6 dB and it drops off to 3 dB on the side and so you can say your 3 dB bandwidth is from 20 degrees to 160 degrees so it's quite a wide um, wide antenna it's not a really focused one like a really many like a 12 coil helical or a bigger Yagi or something like that but it, it you know it goes out to the front pretty well and which is why I think it's suited to have on my transmitter like generally when I fly I'm facing the aircraft even when I'm doing FPV work um, if you're doing FPV and you're flying behind yourself then this antenna might not be suitable okay now there are additional visualizations here we can do here's another 3D representation of the antenna now you'll notice that the feed point for the coax is at the front and I'll show you that I'll show you that later and if we go here select the pattern multi pattern we can see our radiation pattern there now to the front it's really strong and then to the rear it's practically zero which means this makes this antenna it's um, got a very high front to back ratio as well um, and I did a few exercises using in this simulator and, and I put some uh, more wires and and a plate and stuff behind the antenna to see if it would it would affect the actual radio pa radiation pattern out the front and it really it doesn't change it much at all so it kind of it makes it even more reason why it's suitable to have it sitting on your radio and then you've got your radio directly behind which has got all sorts of metal and PCB tracks and stuff in it now this software is very powerful and uh, I I was really amazed and it's free as well it doesn't cost you anything um, now I've been playing around with the different uh, lengths and settings of the Moxon antenna trying to improve the output that that uh, this uh, generator program would give us and I couldn't make that any better and I was also playing with the turnstile antenna IB Crazy's turnstile antenna uh, and I've managed to, you know, rebuild his model and make a few improvements, and you know, it's, I've got to see in practice. But and maybe they won't make much of a difference. But maybe that's something something for later on. Anyway, all the little antennas that I've been been um, playing with, I've decided to um, make a GitHub repository of them, and you can see them here. You just need to search for RC Hacker and antennas, and in the master branch, the plan is once I once I've used an antenna and I know it works well, I'll stick it in here. I'll stick the model in there. But on the experimental branch, this is where I've got um, all the antenna models that I've been playing with. And you know, if if you, this is just going to be antennas for RC, RC stuff. So if you want to get into that program, and you know. I'm not. I'm not going to help people with it at the moment because it's very, very complex. I'm still learning myself. But if you want to get into it, have a look here. Um, I'm going to keep these updated. Currently, it's a bit of a mess. That's why it's experimental. But if you want to look at these models and have a play around, um, you're welcome to. It's um, plan is it's all open source, and we'll be able to contribute as well if you know how GitHub works. So I've got Moxon Turnstile and. I've been playing around with the V antenna, which I did a video on previously. I managed to improve that as well slightly. Anyway, moving on.
we'll move to the bench and um, basically what you need to do is take note of these measurements and it's pretty easy, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Take note of, note of these measurements. If you want to work in inches, you can always um, redo this and generate them, the measurements in inches. And um, just the actual wire size does make a bit of difference as well. If, if we change this to say 0.1 and then hit calculate, you can see these values change here as well. So the best thing to do is to actually decide what wire you're going to use and actually put the values in there. So in my case, I've been using 0.9 or point I think it was actually 0.87. I measured it with the calipers, and I so close enough. I also experimented just as a um, an exercise. I experimented with a two millimeter wire, and then put it through that software as well. Um, generally, with this Moxon antenna, what I found is uh, thinner wire the better. Right. So let's move across to the bench here and um, have a look at. This is what I've decided to do for my um, template and basically I've got my elements here. I've already cut them to length and bent them. The best way I think is to trace out your antenna shape on, you can either use a piece of paper but I just did it directly on this foam which I'm going to mount it all to and um, place the antennas down there, the um, wires down there and bend them to shape and then just cut them off at the right places um, and this is the driven element at the front here so basically you've got a, a driven element and a reflector and it's kind of like a Yagi antenna in a way I'll just get my old right, you saw in a previous video where I where I tuned this antenna and how I attached it to the coax air and basically it's the same sort of thing except this parts up the top here and you've got a reflector at the back and the, the your, your signal well if, if you're receiving with it, I like to think of an antenna as something that you're receiving it comes in, it's just reflected by this and then onto the driven element and then into your radio and likewise it, it's emitted out of here, reflect off the reflector and then out the front so now also you've got to think about I've got a bit of coax here, like this is a pigtail that's available on eBay, SMA pigtail to fit to my receiver and I've put here, um, you can call it an RF choke or a small um, barlin and this is not strictly necessary, like you will get good performance without it but I thought I'd add it in because I found another great uh, amateur radio article that explained why this is a good idea now just just if you can see in there hopefully you can see in there you can see i put just two turns of it going around in there and it doesn't degrade the signal at all as you might think because the signal actually travels on the inside of the outer shield and the outside of the inner core um, this stops this, the idea of this is to stop uh, the outer part of the shield acting as part of the antenna so and hence um, screwing everything up so and the, also the idea is to, when you mount this you have it coming away from the reflector if it's mounted straight across the reflector like this um, it can also it can affect the performance or it, you know it may or may not be noticeable but ideally from what a lot of the amateur radio articles have been saying they say mount it a bit away um, if you want to read up more on this, um, it's pretty heavy reading. I've got a link to it here. I'll, I'll put all these links in in the um, in the uh, description as well. But I've got this website. There's something about amateur radio uh, websites. They're always crusty and they look like they've been written in a text editor. But this guy is Jacques Audet, V E two A Z X, has um, got a collection of nice articles here in French and in English and this one here where he talks about balloons and ferrites on antennas um, good good reading and it'll explain like there's a bit of heavy stuff in there but the main point is you just put a 
couple of ferrites on your coax and it can help with the, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it. Down here something. Here we go. Here's the reason. It stops the current flow going back down the outside of the coax there. So in this case, he's got a dipole there and you can see it. You've got external current flow which can affect the performance of the antenna. And so rather than just your antenna behaving as it would in the simulator with your two elements there, it'll have a third element on the outside, but you just put a few uh, ferrites around your coax and that apparently can solve that problem, like so, with a ferrite. So that's why I've done that. Again, I'm diverging. So let's move back and... Um... Okay, so back to the antenna build. Um, you can see here, I've stripped off the outer shield of the coax there and, and then you sort of peel off the outer wire part and then take it off to one side like that and I've got to strip back a bit of the plastic here and um, I'm going to do this off camera and I'll show you a few of the steps along the way. So, oh, also the front elements as well, obviously in this case I'm using wire with, um, I'm using magnet wire. You don't have to, you can use any sort of copper you can get your hands on, but I've obviously stripped back the enamel so I can solder that onto there. So you've got your two front elements for your feed, and you've got your reflector, and they're the only three elements that you need. Now I'm going to assemble this and just dab a bit of glue to hold these elements in place, but alternatively you could, you could use something like barbecue skewers, in a cross configuration with with holes drilled at the corner or something and then then you could uh, you could potentially have a rather than a rigid wire you could have a really thin soft wire or something like that or you could there's all different methods that you can do this and that uh, that Moxon antenna project website will give you plenty of ideas but this is just the way I've, I've chosen to go so we'll move on and I'll put this together so here's the finished Moxon antenna. You can see I've got the feed point here going into the top. Remember that the the direction of the uh, radiation goes out from the feed point end and you can see the feed point there. Um, it's got a bit of hot glue over it so it's a bit hard to see but I've soldered the inner part of the coax on one side and the outer part on the other side there and then uh, the arms as, as well. I did find that um, you know, placing them because because the gap is more critical than than perhaps the the positioning up here. You might find just put it in place, but when, before you cut the wires here, just leave them a little bit longer, and then you can cut them back. And that way, you'll be able to get a bit more precision with with that gap size. But um, it's very light, uh, just attached with a piece of Velcro on the back there, so. I can um, put this put this in the case or whatever and um, easily swap my antennas out if need be. So there you go, hope you've enjoyed that, the Moxon antenna. It should outperform my other um, V antenna and anything like that and really to get better range I'd say you'd need something like a, a massive helical or a big Yagi to get a sort of a really a, more of a beam antenna, but for all, all purposes, I'm, I'm hoping this will get me my 10 kilometers plus range on 100 milliwatts. Anyway, we'll see. Cheers. Thanks for watching.